Yeah, so welcome to the set of podcasts uh, from the Ubuntu Developer Summit here in Prague. We have Travis Watkins here who's working on Compiz. Um, so let's start off really easy. What exactly is Compiz and why do I care? All right, uh, Compiz is basically, uh, it's a window manager, so it manages like where your windows are positioned on your screen and whether or not they're showing like on just this desktop or all of them. Or, and the special part we do is we do uh, compositing, which means we can do uh, like special effects like uh, animations when you minimize or when you switch desktops or you can zoom in like for a like to see things clearer. It was basically anything you can think of, but you probably have. <laughs> okay, so those videos on the internet with people making cubes and all these crazy effects, that's basically Compass? Yeah, that's all Compass stuff. And what kind of integration issues and choices do you make? Like, for example, we don't ship all the crazy effects by default. Can you explain really how you guys pick effects or the general user experience, the process that you go through for that? All right, uh, well, this is uh, mostly Ubuntu stuff uh, because upstream they have, like, I mean, in the actual project, they have, like, crazier stuff by default. But uh, our main goal is subtle but pleasing. So we don't have cube because that's a big jarring change when you go to switch desktops and it, like, zooms out and spins. And so uh, as long as it doesn't get in the way but, like, makes it more pleasant to use, that's what we go with. Okay. What about issues with hardware support? How do you guys deal with the varying change of support from, say, Intel versus ATI cards and things like that? All right. Uh, we actually have a somewhat advanced thing here. We can do, uh, we check for features that the driver supports, and then we'll bail out, you know, if you don't support it, and we'll just start the old regular stuff. Uh, and then when, when we know there's, like, a certain bug for, like, one video card and a driver, we will blacklist that one so that it will refuse to start on that card. Um, and then we also have, right now, actually, there was a problem with like all the laptops on ATI. So we just, uh, basically anything we have problems with, we just block and wait for the driver to be fixed. So we don't have to deal with the issues. OK, so if I, have, if I have a laptop that doesn't have driver support, it just falls back to the normal window manager. Right, uh, and you can also, if it has a bug, but not one that you usually run into, you can override our blocking and just start it anyway. But by default, it will just go back to the old stuff. Okay, on your blog, you mentioned sort of the roadmap of where you were planning on taking comp is now that Hardy's out the door. Can you uh, elaborate on that a little bit? All right, uh, so right now we have some problems where we don't do things exactly like the old system, and it's like core features, so it gets confusing. You have to know that you're using our stuff and then know how it works in order to realize you know, what you have to do differently. Uh, like when you click the Show Desktop button, it works completely differently than in the regular stuff. Uh, so the main goal there is to just make everything as close as possible to the old stuff so that there's like no weird transition you have to do. Uh, and then... The other big one is I want to do a new uh, uh, decorator. It's the bit that draws like the close button around your windows. Uh, because the one we have right now is using the old theming system. And it's very limited. Uh, basically, what we have now is about the most we can do. Uh, with a new one, we'll be able to do uh, interesting effects like, uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen BOS. Uh, they have like a, just a little bar on the one piece and then instead of going across the whole window. You can't do that right now. We can do that with our new system. Uh, and you can do like transparency on different parts at different levels. And none of that works in the system now, so. Mm. Okay, and is that being done upstream or by yourself or who? Uh, originally this was going to be uh, something I would do. But after I actually posted about this, somebody pointed out they're working on this already, uh, something similar. So. It'll mostly be upstream. We'll probably have some changes we do to uh, tone down the effects because the whole point of this guy's system is the craziest effects you can imagine, basically. But it'll mostly be upstream. Okay. So at UDS, as you guys kind of make the decisions to make a more conservative, I guess, effects right. decision for general users? Right. Um, just as long as it doesn't get in the way. That's what we go by. Uh, and then... 
Uh, we, we try to get upstream to follow that, and they usually do, but we don't always agree. So, can you talk about what you expect to see further on down the line? Like, not confirm any kind of roadmap thing, but in your little brain as you work with this stuff every day, what do you what do you look forward to? Let's say a year, two years down from now, with compositing and all this uh, effect stuff. All right, well, right now we're actually seeing individual applications start to take advantage of the fact that we are doing this compositing work now so they can do special effects like inside their applications or like on your panel. If you click on a, a launcher, it does like a, like the icon flies out at you uh, and they can only do that when, you know, Compass is running. But now that Compass is, you know, usable for more people, they're all starting to do these effects and I think eventually basically every application will have some interesting cool thing it does when compositing is active. Uh, and then in Compass itself, uh, the big thing we're waiting on right now is the X server to support uh, input redirection so that when you transform a window, like I said, say you rotate it like 45 degrees or something so it's like curved away from you on the screen. So you can still, right now you can't click on the window anymore because as far as uh, the display is concerned, the window didn't get transformed. That's all Compass. So all the clicks just go to where the window used to be. But with this input redirection, we will be able to say, okay, when you click there, I actually want it to go where the window is over here, and it all batches up. So you can transform a window any way you want and still use it, which uh, is basically the main limitation we have right now. Uh, once we have that, we can do basically every single thing imaginable that as long as your graphics card can run it. Okay, great. So where would users go to read to find out more information, use, get involved, that kind of stuff? Is, do you guys do this on the Compiz upstream mailing list or is there an Ubuntu one? Or do they just follow your blog or what? Um, we don't actually make much use of the mailing lists. Uh, most of our work happens on uh, IRC on Freenode in the compass-fusion-dev uh, channel. Um, that's where you'll find all the developers. That's where they discuss things. Uh, and then the, if you don't want to get like really into it like that and just find out what's going on, I usually post updates on my blog. And that's uh, realistanewanew.com. Okay, and people can just follow along on planet.ubuntu.com because right, you're yeah. syndicated. Right, I'm um, planet Ubuntu too, so you can, you can just see it there. Uh, I don't post that much, but like probably two or three times like during the release just to say where we are and how much we got done, you know, of what I had planned and just little updates. Okay, thank you very much, Travis.